Good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. I'm glad you could join us today. With me today in the Think Tech studio is Dr. Dara O'Carroll. Dara's been on a couple times before. Welcome again. Yeah, good to be back. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always a pleasure to ha have a, a, a good, articulate, passionate MD here on, on to talk about medical stuff, which is likable science because it impacts, impacts all of us, right? Of course. And we're going to be talking today actually about, about a sort of a, it's a topic that's beginning to get, be more relevant every day to all of us, right? Yeah. Just, just sort of we're on the edge of it right now. It's, it's how climate change is impacting human health. Yes, yeah, and so um, I think anybody with a scientific framework or anybody who's, um, I don't want to say has half a brain, but at least a quarter <laughs> of a brain, um, if they've been following any of the developments around the world, is that uh, our climate is changing, and it's changing right. quickly. Right. And I don't think uh, it's an argument anymore. And I, there's a lot of people who feel that way, especially the uh, International Panel for Climate Change, the IPCC, who's right. the you know, foremost body on this whole science and literature is overwhelmingly saying humans are affecting our climate. And what, we are, what is happening is it's our CO2 production and our other uh, greenhouse gases that are causing this. I don't think that's a question, but just like any disease process happens, the, the earth is now kind of gradually having this incremental uh, change and it's pretty much creating a process that's charging the earth. The more heat that we have, the more energy the Earth has, and it's changing disease processes that are happening across the globe. Right, and in a number of very different sorts of ways, right? I mean, yeah, in ways that are are kind of obvious, right? And then in ways that are not so obvious, exactly. and we can go over those. Exactly, yeah, yeah. and um, <clears throat> and it's happening. I mean, around the world, it, it it takes sort of different forms in different places with different populations, yeah. but basically, sort of. The bottom line is more and more, and it's likely to be more and more in the future, it is really going to be, this is, this climate change is really going to affect the health of people all over the globe. Sure, lots it's, and lots it's, of people. it's a new world. Yeah. It's a new yeah. world. Yeah, so I think the most obvious one is that storms are becoming more frequent. Right. right. Since 1980, big storms, um, you know, are now double in frequency, and they're even mm -hmm. trying to possibly create a new category of storm. That's right, they're talking about, about having to add to the hurricane force yeah, there's Category 5, but now you're getting storms that have sustained winds of 200 miles right. per hour. Right. Like, where do you go from there? Like yeah. 200, a sustained winds of 200, that's, you know, tornado velocity, but in a much wider breadth. Yeah. You know? And so these cyclones are ripping through, um, you know, the Philippines and really just, just you know, creating wild, wild havoc. And right. so the rate that you're going um, <clears> to... <throat> that you're going to injured or you're going to have some sort of uh, illness from a storm flood or uh, any of those is now going to if rates of carbon dioxide do not decrease by 2040 it'll be 50 fold chance that you're going to get hurt in a storm throughout uh, any given year yeah yeah just just really frightening changes coming up and one can only envision if one of these big super storms hits in some place like the coast of bangladesh a low lying sure. area yeah i think we've got a picture of a, of a super storm uh -huh. uh, I'm not sure which one this was, but uh, yeah, there we okay. go. Yeah, so these storms are really, really intense. And so um, the number of floods, landslides, and, um, and avalanches has quadrupled since 1980 as well. So all of those are a higher risk. We just had a big flood in Chile. Um, you know, there's a lot of floods going down in, uh, in Australia at the moment as well. There was one last year in, the, in Oregon. Uh, yep. Washington slid down a whole mudslide buried part of a town there. Yeah. yeah. And um, the, the Lancet came out with a study that said um, by the end of the century, 150,000 people per year in Europe could be affected and be uh, um, uh, killed by these extreme weather wow. events. Right. So I think that's the most obvious yeah. in our sphere of we're seeing storms that get covered by the news. We right. see the landslides. Yeah, there's heat events and drought events again in the same extreme events, right? Yeah, yeah. But either one can kill. And then the ones that are kind of less obvious is the vector-borne disease or right. zoonotic diseases or diseases that are transferred by ticks or, um, or, or mosquitoes or any, of, any other kind of insects or animals. Right, because the changing climate is changing their range or their timing of, their, of the season when they're active. Yeah, you've got a more humid world, you've got a more uh, um, hot wor a hotter world. Right you're going to have more um, uh, territory that mosquitoes and ticks can survive in and in longer periods. So if, we've, if we jump to the next slide, we've got uh, something that affected um, a moose uh, here. And so behind me, 
uh, is a ghost moose. And so they call these ghost mooses because really ghost uh, moose aren't supposed to be white. And what they're doing is they're, uh, they're rubbing off these ticks that are just infesting them. So it's not mm. only is it happening to moose, it's happening to us. So they're rubbing off their fur. And they're rubbing off their <laughs> fur because they have up to 100,000 ticks on them, which Whoa. is just completely, uh, I mean, 100,000 on these majestic animals yeah. are really bleeding them dry. And so these aren't the same ticks that affect humans. Mm -hmm. Deer ticks are the ones that predominantly um, bite humans, and especially in the Northeast, but they transfer all ho a host of tick-borne diseases, and mm -hmm. the predominant one is Lyme disease. Right. And Lyme disease can be a very indolent and incessant mm -hmm. um, disease, yeah. but acutely it can cause severe problems such as uh, Bell's palsy or facial droop, heart block, you can have um, uh, all sorts of arrhythmias from it. And chronically, it can cause memory loss, nerve problems, yeah. um, joint issues, and people deal with these for sometimes a lifetime when they get Lyme disease. Yeah, so that's terrible. That's going to likely to become more common then. Yeah, and then rates of it are, are skyrocketing in the Northeast and becoming wow. more, more prevalent. Malaria has now had an outbreak in Southern Europe when it hasn't been there in 100 years. Oh, I hadn't heard that. Yeah, yeah. dengue is, is on the move as well. Zika virus, everything is sort of kind of making moves. All because we're getting basically a warmer, more hospitable climate for disease-carrying insects, basically. Yeah, yeah. and then and it's, you know going on the warm, um, warm aspect, cholera as well. If we mm -hmm. jump to the next slide, is a picture of a, a girl in Bangladesh. Uh, well, behind us is behind me is a tick. There we go. So that's that's the deer oh, tick. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next slide is a, is a girl of, uh, in uh, Bangladesh, and uh, I mean. Bangladesh is one of the lowest lying countries and most right. densely, densely populated countries in the world. And what they're seeing is what, you know, Florida may see pretty soon. And so um, cholera is a disease of, uh, of, of water uh, inequality and water sanitation issues. But when you mix um, higher levels of sea, uh, higher sea levels plus more t uh, higher uh, temperatures, right. cholera has this uh, prolific effect where it just becomes much more rapid. Right. Um, and so rates of cholera in Bangladesh have always been high, but they're getting higher. And mm -hmm. thankfully, there's been some public uh, um, health initiatives where they've distributed some uh, vaccines, mm -hmm. and that has helped to quell it. But they keep seeing outbreak after outbreak. And, yeah. and one um, uh, place where things have succeeded in um, keeping the outbreak at bay is the, uh, in Cox Bazaar, the Rohingya camp. And so mm -hmm. one million people, they distributed an oral vaccine, which comes in two doses. And that has helped to keep them from uh, experiencing a bad cholera outbreak. Excellent. So, well, so right. cholera is one. Um, if we jump to the next slide, there's um, something called harmful algal blooms. So you mm -hmm. can see behind me um, and on that screen is that, I mean, that's just a soupy mix of, right. I don't know, somebody blended some spinach into, into the whole <laughs> Great Lakes yeah, there. Right. Um, and so these carry all sorts of hosts of, of problems if you ingest or around them too much. One is uh, cyanobacteria, and those can cause a lot of, uh, a lot of nerve is issues. They can even cause seizures. And then uh, the red tides, right. yeah, which I don't have a photo of, but the red tides um, yeah, can have uh, dianoflagellates in them, and they have something called this uh, brevitoxin, which mm -hmm. can cause, even on land, can cause issues. So if you've got a red tide on the coast, it can actually secrete this brevitoxin into the air, and up to one mile inland, it can cause asthma-like issues, bronchospasm, which is especially important for people with asthma because right. it'll cause their asthma to become much more severe and worse. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Awful, awful. Um, yep. Okay. Then we have uh, some water source issue diseases, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, those were sort of the, water, uh, the other water issues, but okay. we've got some uh, heat-related issues okay. as well. I mean, just in general... Um, heat, I mean, with climate change, the old term for it was global warming, but mm -hmm. we want to be a little right. bit more specific as the climate is changing. And so uh, the world is getting hotter, and where it's going to get the hottest is in our cities. Right. Because our cities have something called the urban heat island effect. Right, because they don't have cooling plants and green trees and all these yeah. things that help evaporation and provide shade and get everything cool. Instead, they just, the cement building is just. Yeah, they hold well, on to yeah, everything, yeah. and then and then the cement buildings all have AC in them, which right. are putting out heat as well. Right. Yeah, and so there's a picture of downtown LA where they're 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 feeling it as well, and where I used to work in an ER, and we saw a lot of uh, homeless, predominantly homeless, uh, with heat strokes coming in, mm -hmm. and um, the 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 2003 heat wave that happened in Europe, seventy thousand people died in that week to ten day span. Mm -hmm. 
12,000 people alone in Paris. Wow. Predominantly it's um, people in the elderly population mm -hmm. or people with chronic diseases such as heart failure and kidney failure. But it's people who can't, you know, really help themselves otherwise. It's right. that, you know, they may be stuck in an old apartment or an old building that's from the 1800s that has never experienced heat like this in a prolonged period like this. Right. And then how do they get away? Yeah. And I mean, we've had what? Four out of the last five years have been record-breaking heat, right? Something, yes, something, yeah, something the, like the five hottest years, or, uh, four, or four hottest years uh, on record have or been in the last five, five years. years. Yeah, uh, it's, you know, and it, that, that you don't have to be like a genius to figure out where that trend is going. Right? Yeah, I know it's cold now, and <laughs> right. especially in Hawaii and in, the, in right. North America, but. I mean, uh, is, that's that polar vortex right. where the hot air from the southern hemisphere is drawing the cold air down, and that polar vortex mm -hmm. is not keeping the air in the Arctic where it right. should be. So just because it's cold now, and this aggravates me uh, when Donald Trump says, right. can we bring back global warming, um, you know, doesn't mean that uh, global war or climate change is gone. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, uh, that's, uh, again, it's, it's one of these... Big problems, and it really shows the sort of the, the global nature of this whole thing. Yes, uh, this whole issue of how, just how, these changing climates and all the different ways, different mechanisms, the physical mechanisms, the sort of physiological mechanisms, the the disease vector mechanisms, the the change in ocean and surface water temperatures, mm -hmm. all these different things. So, this is this is great. Uh, I mean, it's not great. It's, it's awful, but it, it's great that we're learning about it. It's great that we're beginning to do some things about it, that more people are taking uh, knowledge of it, gaining uh, an understanding of it. I think at this point we have to go off to a first break, though. Okay. But we'll be back. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at three o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. And welcome back to Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. Dr. Dara O'Carroll is with me today in the studio, and we're talking about how climate change is impacting our health in mostly negative ways, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the only positive way I can think of is that up to a, about a, a degree Celsius or so, a degree and a half, it might increase food production. But right. above that, it's going to decrease food yeah, production. Yeah, yeah. And, and we were talking about, before, before our break, we were talking about heat. Uh, heat impacts and some of the more sort of obvious cases that we've had recently, the huge heat death, uh, heat earlier deaths in Europe that you mentioned yeah. from a few years ago and all yeah. that. But you were telling me during the break about a, a, a sort of special case of this. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, something called, uh, unfortunately, uh, Mesoamerican uh, nephropathy or nephritis. And, and what it is, Mesoamerica being the area from like mid Mexico south all the way down to the northern South American countries, mm -hmm. Guatemala, Colombia. And it's mostly on the Pacific side of these countries where uh, there's a, uh, mysteriously there was a group of, a uh, specific group of males, 30 to 50 years old, all agricultural workers who were coming in with kidney failure. And they presumed at first there was a lot of hypotheses where mm -hmm. there was um, toxins because they're, they're all around pesticides. It was banana farms, sugar cane, um, coffee, that sort of thing. Um, and they've gradually, over the process of studying this since the 1980s, 1990s, have ruled out the toxin phenomenon because it's starting to happen in Thailand, it's starting to happen in Sri Lanka, and then they're using different chemi chemicals. And 
you know, when they studied the blood tests of all these these uh, young males, they didn't find any evidence of hard hard chemical right. um, indolence. And what it comes down to is that they were just getting chronically dehydrated from being out in the in the in the in the in the sun and working that hard. So is it the the process of being dehydrated on a chronic basis just really took a toll on their kidneys. Huh. And so they come in and the typical presentation of kidney failure is that you've got swelling in your legs, you're feeling a little fatigued, sometimes you get a little bit uh, confused if that's really pr progressed. But unfortunately, most of these uh, guys live in rural areas, agricultural areas, and they can't afford dialysis. And mm -hmm. Dialysis in itself is a life-changing event. You've got to be somewhere for three hours a day, three times a week. Right. Uh, and a lot of them perish. And it's the, one of the most predominant uh, leading causes of death in these, this group of um, uh, people in, in, in Mesoamerica and now Sri Lanka and Thailand. And that's got to have wide ranging effects because lots of them are doubtless husbands and fathers. And so their, their families are then left without a wage earner. And, right, yeah, and they're the breadwinners of, yeah. of a lot of these families. Yeah. And so it's, it's terrible. And, and, and it would seem though that should be reasonably dealable with, right? I mean, yeah. you should just get more water to those guys and tell them, hey, you know, yeah. every 15, 20 minutes stop and slug down some water. And, yeah, even that doesn't help as much as just being in the heat for that long. Really? And so, I mean, this wasn't happening in the 80s and 90s, hmm. or started happening in the late 80s, 90s. This wasn't happening before. And so, I don't know if you can argue that uh, with this fact that like uh, climate is changing the way uh, it affects humans you know huh. oh. yeah and then on uh, moving on to air pollution there's a little bit of smog behind me in LA mm -hmm. um, but uh, that's another obvious and people are track uh, air quality air mm -hmm. quality index and um, smog, predominantly ozone, uh, ground level ozone that's in smog, which is three oxygen molecule, molecules, right. really harmful to uh, the lungs. It right. causes uh, asthma uh, problems, it causes uh, COPD or emphysema problems. Um, even rates of visits to the ER and lost work days all skyrocket when the air quality index is, is, right. is getting worse. And it's a very complex problem too, because it actually can be, I gather, a mixture of man-made sources and natural sources, the, the terpenes and things that plants are dumping out yeah. that interact in some manner with a lot of these man-made pollutants to, to make more, yeah. ir more irritating compounds and compounds that are more uh, harmful. Yeah, yeah. and um, if we move to the next slide, I think we have a diagram. Well, this is, uh, if we jump to the, the, the big picture of it, yeah, this, uh, this diagram here is uh, kind of uh, how these particulate matter or all these smog and um, terpenes that uh, Ethan just mentioned affect the body. So really the process is uh, of the pharynx, which is basically um, your back of your throat from your nose all the way down to the biggest part of your airway, um, the trachea. There's two um, uh, functions that it serves. There's one is to uh, humidify the air. So by mm -hmm. the time any, uh, the air gets down into your lungs, it's 100% humidified. So that's mm -hmm. why the fact of breathing, you lose water. So that's mm -hmm. why if you're living in a dry environment, make sure you're drinking water. But two is to catch all these, um, these particulate matter and things that are in the air. And so if it's got a, so we're talking on microns here. So coarse particles are uh, around 10 microns or a little bit less. And so the, your upper airways will catch those. Right. And if they've got little hair, uh, uh, hairs that are lining the upper airways that uh, kind of bring everything back up. And that's why you've got to clear your throat and, and that sort of nature. Um, but the fine particles that are less than 2.5 microns or even the ultra fine particles that are less than one or the really, really fine that are less than 0.1, they go all the way down into your lung and your alveoli where you actually where you are transferring oxygen. Right. These are sort of these little sacs in your lungs, basically, yeah. these tiny little yeah, pockets. And, yeah. And you're, if you're chronically exposed to bad air that are, is getting all the way down here with, you know, uh, carbon material, uh, wildfires that are causing um, soot to be dispersed mm -hmm. in the air, rates of um, obviously uh, lung cancer, um, even uh, rates of heart attack are increased when air quality is 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 poor. So mm -hmm. it's it's really something that can really affect your health. Right. Again, this is this, this is something that we have a good deal of control over in theory. Yeah. We, we could choose if if we have this social will basically to control that more tightly. Yeah. But indeed, right now, our political leaders are trying to loosen controls on some of that. Right. So, and, uh, and coal is such an old technology. Why, right. why are we trying to go back to yeah, it? You yeah. know, old and dirty technology where, 
you know, you're just ruining the environment. And then again, this, this compounds with the increased heat, you know, and, and makes everything worse, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, yeah. It, the, the hotter the, um, the environment is, the more ozone is going to be... Um, going to be made when you right. combine that with the smog and the particulate matter that's right. in the air you know you're really asking for trouble yeah exactly. and so i think the next slide shows um, um a, a big picture of uh, a, a fire that was in up all the way up in northern alberta and you can see the smoke plume this is a satellite photo going all the way down into the middle of of the united states into the midwest and so you could have a fire so far away but this particulate matter is dumping on you you know, hundreds to uh, 1,500 kilometers in, in displacement. Yeah, there was a very bad case of that last summer for a while. Seattle, Washington, and Portland, Oregon had the distinction of having the worst air quality of any city in the world for several days because yeah. of fires that were happening up in British Columbia. There were 100 forest fires going on at once, and all that smoke and particulates were coming right down over Seattle and Portland, yeah, making so the air. I heard one once were saying, it's equivalent to smoking eight packs of cigarettes a day or something if you're outside. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's, that's terrible. Yeah. You don't want to be a subject to your body to that. Right. You know, yeah. every in, uh, insult you have increases your rate for problems in the future. Right. And I believe our, our next photo shows uh, another uh, satellite photo of, uh, uh, well, here, here's, we'll get on the topic of drought. And um, mm -hmm. so uh, we're going to have a warmer planet, which is going to change the rates and where our uh, where our water is being displaced. Right. And a lot of the areas that are already hot and dry are going to get hotter and drier, basically. Correct. Yeah, yeah. you're going to have wetter spots, but you're also going to have hotter and drier right. spots. And so um, you're going to have increased dust storms. You're going to have water issues. Right. You're going to um, have a lot of problems keeping people hydrated who are already having issues. Right. Well, we already, in, in some of these uh, less developed nations, Women and girls, particularly, are spending significant amounts of time getting water for their families. They, they yeah. have to walk yep. half an hour, an hour, yep. two hours in some cases to go and get water. Yep. And if it's hotter and drier, yep. that situation is only going to get worse. Yeah, right? and in clean water, especially. Right. You oh, yeah. know, you, there might be water that's close right. by, but it might be with the hotter temperatures, you're going to have more of the right. uh, algae in it, more of right. the cholera that are in it, and right. more of the issues as well. Yeah, you know, I've had on this on, on my show earlier uh, a guy with it who makes these things called Madi Drops, which are a porous ceramic tablet that has silver infused in it. And you drop that into water, and it knocks out all your pathogens very neatly. Well, it's a wonderful technology, and I yeah. suspect it's going to become more widespread. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's hope we're not going to need it as right. much, right. but it's, it's there if we, yeah. if we need it. Yeah. Yeah. But droughts are, are obviously a devastating phenomenon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, um, and the next slide shows uh, a photo of uh, uh, a, a dust storm that's coming off the Sahara Desert. Mm -hmm. And this is really, really mind-blowing to me, is that you yeah. can see Spain in the upper right corner there, and that mm -hmm. dust storm is as big as Spain. Which and it's is halfway across the Atlantic. Yeah, basically. and it's moving across the Atlantic. Yeah. And that dust um, will go ahead and deposit all the way over in Florida and the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so dust is marvelously... Uh, uh, good at transporting pathogens. Mm -hmm. Fungi, influenza can even go across it, other viruses, mm -hmm. and bacteria. Mm -hmm. Every gram of dust, you can uh, take a pinch of it in, 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 your, in, your, um, in your fingers. About 100,000 um, bacteria live in that dust. Mm -hmm. And so when this is sprinkling over other areas, and it's, it's, it's increasing the rate of disease that are transported across the globe. Mm, yeah, Spread, spreading stuff all around. Yeah, and so you've got dust going from North Africa to North America, you've also got vice versa. You've got a lot of dust coming from the Mongolian plains in, um, in China and coming down and sweeping over the Southeast countries, but also Taiwan, Japan, and even across the Pacific right. over, over to North America as yeah. well. So it, it comes coming from both sides. And yeah. you've got, if you've got drier climates, it's only gonna increase. Right, exactly, exactly, it's just, yeah. just gonna be worse. That's, uh, and then there, the other effect, of course, of drought is that drought means typically less productive farming, right? Yep. Typically, farmers cannot grow as much because most plants, all plants need water. Yep. And typically, the more, in a lot of cases, up to a certain point, at least, the more water you have, the better, the healthier, the bigger plants you get. Mm -hmm. In the middle of a drought, your plants wither, they die, you don't have that food supply, mm -hmm. you're eating less food, less healthy food. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you're opening yourself up then for all kinds of, of other illnesses as well as 
probably dietary insufficiencies, right? Yeah, uh, completely. And then you look at the world's oceans with the increasing uh, acid levels and pH that is happening right. and our coral reefs that are disappearing, right. that whole ecosystem may completely be altered and changed. And so what the <coughs> our, our fishing supply may completely be gone. Yes, I, I, I was reading a while ago that it's something like Three billion people on this planet already more or less directly depend on fish for some significant part of their protein, and something like 17 out of the major 19 fisheries on this planet are considered threatened or endangered, basically. That they're, yeah. they're collapsing or already collapsed. Yep. And when that gets a little bit worse, I mean, they're already fishing down the food chain to smaller fish and all that. That's, we're just going to lose a whole chunk of our food supply, mm -hmm. and more and more people are not going to get the protein they need. And, Yep. Yeah, no, it's, 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 let's hope that something is, is done about it. Um, but there's a lot of ways that um, our food supply is really going to be affected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and then our, our next slide, I believe, is uh, our last one. And um, we can jump to a big photo of that as well. That's um, a study that came out just in November of 2018, so very recently. And you can just uh, briefly, this is a <coughs> uh, the southern... Um, Bangladesh, um, a little bit north of Cox Bazar in a uh, place called Chakria. And the darker red uh, colors in maroon are uh, where rates of miscarriages were uh, curiously found to be a lot higher than the rest of the country. So the rest of the country was down around 8 to 7 to 8 percent. And some of these areas were having miscarriages around of 13 to 14 percent. And all of these areas were closer to the river. And what was happening is that the sea level is rising and spilling back into, the, into these rivers and uh, depositing salinity and salt into their drinking water. And so when you um, intake too much salt, and they were on the order of uh, normal uh, salt should be around 5 grams, give or take, per day. Some of these uh, women were intaking around 17 grams. Hmm. And when you increase salt, it's going to increase your blood pressure. And especially during pregnancy, it's very detrimental. And you can have rates of preeclampsia and miscarriages, which they saw here. So, so this is a way, obvious, uh, way that's not so obvious that climate is affecting health, hmm. but also increasing miscarriages. So. Yeah, and, and if it's happening there, there's lots of places around the coast of the world where we're getting saline yep. intrusion into groundwater yep. that people are using for drinking. Yeah. So again, this problem, we're seeing a little bit of it now and we're likely to be seeing more of it. It's yeah, the Mekong here. Delta, all of Cambodia, <coughs> Laos, and right. China are really going to start seeing it next. Right. And what happens when, it, you know, again, it ha Hurricane Sandy spills a lot of uh, uh, seawater into the New York drinking mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, pot or, right. into, or into Florida. Yeah. So All the Pacific Islands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Carabasse, you know, is, yeah. is literally sinking, and they're, yeah. they're six feet or, or less above water now. Right. And right. So what are they going to do with theirs? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's truly, truly, uh, this, this is uh, pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, I have to say, uh, in some sense, Dara, you, you have helped me make one of the least likable episodes, likable science here. <laughs> <laughs> unlikable science? So we title that uh, but, unlikable but it, science. But it's relevant science, and it really shows how, how we need science to inform us of, of these problems so we can at least take the action we need. Yeah. So I thank you very much for coming on and giving, giving us such a, such a, great, a great view of, this, of these uh, many, many multifaceted changes here. Thank you, Dara. And I hope uh, you'll come back and join us next week on another episode of Likeable Science here on ThinkTech Hawaii.